In this section we will discuss about various protection schemes and how to implement these protection schemes in ETAP and for this lesson we will be discussing about the differential protection. So this is the differential protection. The main philosophy of the differential protection is based on the Kirchhoff's current law that is the current entering is equivalent to the current outgoing. So using this as example over here you can see the current being delivered by the generator will be equal to the sum of the currents being drawn by these two feeders over here. So if there is any unbalance between the currents that is incoming to this bus and outgoing from this bus we can say there is a fault at the bus. So this is the main philosophy of the bus differential protection. So this is the relay over here. So any unbalancing incoming and outgoing currents can cause the relay to trip. And the device number for the differential relay is number 87. So let us go to ETAP in order to implement this differential protection in bus bar. Now we have entered into ETAP and in this example, this is one of the previous example for protection coordination and in this example we will be implementing the bus bar differential protection at bus number 3. So bus number 3 has 5 outgoing feeders over here and 1 incoming feeder over here. So let me conduct a load flow study over here. You can see there is about 900 amps coming into the bus number 3 over here and all these 900 amps are being distributed to 5 different feeders so all the currents over here will add up to about 899.3 amps so why we implement bus bar protection is that if we have our feeder protection failure in this case let this feeder fail under any some circumstances so what will happen is that this fault will act at this bus over here so the bus will be damaged so having a fault at the bus is considered to be more severe because in the case of the feeder this will only affect this feeder itself but a fault at the bus will affect the entire power system over here so the fault at bus number three will cause the failure to deliver power to all these feeders over here so it is decided to have a faster protection for the bus and therefore differential bus bar protection is preferred at substations so let us create our schematic for the bus bar protection and for that you will need CTs to be connected to all the outgoing feeders and the incoming feeder to the bus number 3 so let me do that first and then to select our differential relay which is over here in the instrument toolbar the differential relay I have selected the differential relay and one thing you will have to keep in mind is that the total current from this part over here that is the outgoing part of the bus number 3 should add up to this value of current so in this case if you have noticed this you can see that all the directions of the CTs are in the same direction so when I connect this in series we will have the current adding up to the total value but here too when you observe here the direction is similar to that of the outgoing feeder so you will have to reverse the direction or reverse the polarity so that these five feeders add up and is being subtracted by this value of current so that the differential current will be zero in ideal case so let me go to this ct over here and i'm going to reverse the polarity okay now that is being done the next thing we will have to keep in mind is about the ct ratios now when selecting the ct ratios again you must keep in mind that all these currents should add up to the value and that value of current should be available 
at the secondary of the CT in order for the differential protection to act ideally. So let me connect our CTs to our differential relay over here. So I have connected all of the differential relays terminals over here. So everything is being connected over here. Now let me go to the differential relay itself. So I will go to the DIF tab over here and I am going to select the relay. I will select the Alstom CAG14. So this is a balanced restricted bus zone. So bus protection is also available here. This is a high impedance relay. We can also adjust the operation time over here. And the output I am going to operate this circuit breaker over here. So that will be over here. So we can say that the protection coordination before the protection coordination kicks in, the circuit breaker over here will act. And for the input, we have like five outgoing terminals and one incoming terminal. So that is about six terminals over here and I'm going to select the IDs over here so all the CTs are selected but the current ratios are not been provided now let me provide in the CT ratios over here so the CT ratios will be 100 is to 1 for all the outgoing cities over here so that being provided now we will have to look at that if you do the math you can see that all these currents should add up to about 8.9 amps so over here we have about 899 amps so we will have to rate that accordingly so this will be 1000 is to 1 and now we have done all the CT ratios as well so let me go to the differential relay okay here you can see 1000 is to 1 100 is to 1 CT is over here and the output is also defined we can also change in the time of operation over here I'm not going to change that and let me go to the star mode over here and I'm going to put a fault on this bus over here so you can see that the bus the bus differential relay has operated and the circuit breaker number six is the first to operate regardless of the protection coordination that we have provided so this differential relay will only work for this bus over here so when there is a fault at any of the feeders say over here you can see that the bus differential protection will not work in this case this is only limited to the bus over here so this is how you can make a bus differential protection in a tab and in the next lesson we will look at providing differential protection for transformers